we understand that in a blended family, you need to create some things intentionally mm -hmm. so that you can deal with dysfunction. Yeah. That's really the premise of what we're talking about here. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome to the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. We're back this week. I'm still stealing, uh, still stealing, still stealing. stealing Scott's thunder by opening up the podcast just what? for this series. I promise we'll go back to the regular after this. <laughs> well, you've done a great job. Well, thank so, you. Uh, and we're excited. We're going to be kind of rounding out our series. This is part four of our series on blending your bunch. Again, all off of our book that is releasing in September called Blended and Redeemed. And we are so excited about the release of that book and so much yes. uh, thought and prayer has gone into it. And we just hope that you guys love it. Um, but we talk about all different topics, but we've really been talking about how you, how to blend and really some, some unique topics of blending your family. Yeah. I think, and you've heard us, uh, if you listen to the previous uh, episodes, we were talking about the blending kingdom project and how um, a lot of, we were seeing a lot of the same questions and patterns and subjects being brought up. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of what we've been talking about in this four part series. Series. And, um, one of the things that we talked about, we were going to talk about, and that's today's topic is dysfunction. Yeah. Um, and we talk about how every family on some level has dysfunction. Um, I would say growing up, my family put the fun in dysfunction because we were dysfunctional and look how it turned out. Yeah. My, my family put the the police department in our family because my, my family was crazy growing up. Um, but you know, the fact that dysfunctional family, and I want to look, just look at the word dysfunctional. Yeah. Dysfunctional is not a permanent sense of dysfunction. It is a, what I would think of as a temporary dysfunction in your family. And it's, it, it's a hiccup. It's a speed bump. It yeah. is part of the process of, and really part of the joy of blending your family. Yes. Um, and, and there's so many different personalities and different things that are affecting it. Mm -hmm. So number one, if you have dysfunction, just know that you're just like us. You're normal. Yeah. We, okay. we teach this stuff and we still have dysfunction in our family. Oh, we're still, yeah. you know, stuff that we're like, how did this happen? And, and what are we doing? Well, look at the lineage of where Jesus came from. Yeah. Man, there's yeah. a lot of dysfunction and all that. Exactly. And, and a lot of dysfunction the root cause of that is yeah. an expectation. Yes. And and I don't, I don't want to like harp on people that have expectations because I have an expectation. I, I, I sent, generally wake up with an expectation of how yeah. my day is going to go. Uh, I had an expectation when we got married. Uh, I had an expectation of what we could be. And, but, you know, there were things that I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know we were going to have three kids in the first three years that got married. Didn't know that. Did not know that. God has this into humor. He does. And and if we hadn't figured out what caused that, we'd have like nine by now. Mm -hmm. um, but those kind of things add different layers into your blended family. And whatever the situation that you're coming into, whether you just newly blended or you've been blended for five years and you have four different kids and three different, or whatever that case may be, we want to talk about you know how to deal with dysfunction. Mm -hmm. and maybe normalize a little bit of it yeah. and then talk about expectations and, and why maybe they are not as healthy for your blended family. Well, we wrote in the book, we said, expectation is the enemy of joy, death by expectation. And unrealistic expe expectations for how quickly everyone is going to bond and adjust um, to this huge change in life can cause unneeded stress and anxiety. And I think that's one of the issues that we saw a lot of when mm -hmm. doing the project was we have this dysfunction, but it's, it's a lot of it after talking to these couples, it was just the expectations of what they thought it was going to look like or what it should look like. And every family, again, you're adding different personalities, you're adding different backgrounds, you're adding past traumas and possibly mm. crisis and things that are being brought into this, into the new family. And it's, it's going to look different for everyone. And in those things, it can naturally cause dysfunction. Um, but there are some things that we can do to create stability and, um, and some normalcy to combat what the enemy will use for harm. You yeah. Know? 
Well, you think about it, you you know, when you get married and you're blending your family, first of all, there's an extreme high of just good feelings. Sure. You know, like I have found love again. I have found somebody to commit my life to. Yeah. Um, majority of the activities that you're doing as a family are very fun. Mm -hmm. So you're, 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 you're doing all the things that we talk about to bond, to create more intense love feelings. Um, and these things are normally very high, especially when you start blending your family. But then over time, you have this kind of like downward slope of I get into the rut of life. I get into, you know, uh, understanding that maybe not everything is the same. We talk, we've talked a lot about like, you know, inner vows, the things that you bring into your marriage, the landmines, the the the, the U-Haul trucks that show up a month after you get married. And yeah. you're like, where did this come from? That happens with children too. Yeah. You know, their things and their issues come up. All of a sudden, your expectation of what you thought your family was going to be is may not be the, the, mm -hmm. the accurate statement anymore. Yeah. And there's going to be highs and lows in building your faithful in, in building your family, but God is faithful to walk us through all of that. He's faithful to walk us through so many different seasons um, that we're going to experience as families because because there's life change, there's age change, there's situational changes that are going to come about. So what are some things that we can do, Scott, to um, to one protect uh, the unity of the family when we have transition, when we have seasons of change? What are some things that we can do uh, proactively daily mm -hmm. and maybe like even future things? Yeah. Well, just remember the, the bedrock of your foundation of your family, you know, and that's kind of what I want to kind of, if I can create an illustration for you, mm -hmm. the foundation, as we build our home, as we build anything in our life, the foundation is what sustains us over time. And, and we know in building, you know, a, a blended kingdom family, we know our foundation needs to be in Christ. We know that that is about spending time in the Word. That is about finding a church home. That is about finding people around you that are, that are building you up for Christ. So we know that foundationally as a family, we need to be setting that up correctly mm -hmm. so that when dysfunction happens, when the storm comes, when the winds get stronger, mm -hmm. your house is not blown over. Yeah. It doesn't crumble because your foundation was solid. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? One, daily time in prayer. Mm -hmm. So some families may be at that stage where they can all sit down and be like, hey, we're having a prayer. Yeah. You know, we have little kids. So sometimes it's, hey, let's pray before dinner. Mm -hmm. Let's just make sure that we're putting prayer in our daily lives. Yeah. Other things you can do are the things that are fun. You know, we talk about fun activities as that creates more intense feelings with children to create bonding in your family. So fun family activities, game nights, do a movie together, you know, going to church as a family, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, I would also say, um, you know, more on the spiritual side, I would say, you know, planning out family devotion time, family time. You, Scott, you talked about praying together as a family. Um, we talked to some couples and I thought this was excellent that every Sunday, um, they would come together, they would have a family meeting and their children were a little bit older, but they would have a family meeting and then they would all ho hold hands and every person would go around and pray. And I just thought, man, that is so, um, so good that, you know, and as your children progress in their prayer life and as they progress in their relationship with the Lord, um, you know, providing those opportunities as a family to come together into the presence of God, because man, nothing's going to equip you and unite you more than that. Um, and I would also say, you know, Bible study, maybe it's, um, our boys have the, the, a little study guide Bible that, and there's an app to it. And so we can like watch it, we can mirror it on the TV mm -hmm. so we can do that together. Um, but being in the word with them and reading those, uh, you know, Bible stories with them and relating that to life, um, you know, and planning trips with your family, you know, more practical things like planning trips yeah. with your family, holiday traditions. You know, we talk about how you can honor the past, but also create a new culture, a new tradition and things for your family. Maybe your little kids are like, Hey, I still like, you know, doing this thing that I did with my mom and my dad, but you know, yes, as a new family, can mm -hmm. we do something different? Yeah. Um, and, and start something new as a family together. Yeah. And all of these things, again, we're looking at the foundation of how you deal with family dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to go back to, because a lot of people who may be listening to the podcast may be thinking, you know, I'm just really trying to figure out how to get 
through today with this, you know, uh, dealing with an ex-spouse or dealing with my child who's acting out or all of these things. And we understand that there are situational things that you, you every family has to deal with. Mm-hmm. What we're talking about is we understand that in a blended family, you need to create some things intentionally mm-hmm. so that you can deal with dysfunction. Yeah. That's really the premise of what we're talking about here is we don't want you to fall victim or to be, you know, just at the whim of what's going on in your family, mm-hmm. not understanding that the foundation that you create is the absolute life sustaining thing that's going to get you through that event. Yeah. So again, these are, we've talked about this in actually in other episodes, we talk about fun and we talk mm-hmm. about building dysfunction or, or building commitment and, and love with your and family, but these are also the, the foundation elements of how to deal with dysfunction. Yeah. And I, and like I said earlier, um, I want to go back to something where I talked about, you know, with different ages and seasons and there's transition, things change. And I think, um, I think of a, st- of when Michael was younger and it was, he had about a year with you, just you and me before, seems like forever ago, before Shay came along. Yeah. Um, and so there was time for us one to build, to build our family, you know, we, we, we were going to church. We were like, we're setting our family on the bedrock of Jesus Christ. Like that is our firm foundation. But we also had that time to, to cultivate a relationship with Michael, with the three of us. Um, so that when that life change came, when Shay came along and, and Michael's dad and stepmom also had another child yeah. around that time too. So there was a lot of life change going on mm-hmm. for him. And then over the next three years, we built a house. We had two more kids. We, you know, yeah. we grew by a few more dogs as well. We have full, four golden retrievers y'all. Um, but there was just a lot of change in things going on. And with that, it, it, it did bring about some dysfunction. It did bring about, um, opportunities for the enemy, enemy to come in and sow disunity. Yeah. Um, you know, but because I think we were so, so grounded and because, um, you know, being in the word is something that we practice. It's a discipline and being in prayer. Um, you know, th- there were seasons where, you know, you know, we felt the wall shaking, mm-hmm. like, you know, the wind blew and the house shook, but it didn't come crumbling down because, um, we were just dependent on God, you know, throughout that entire process. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's really the separation point guys. Um, you know, we know the statistics on what blended families tell us, and we know the divorce rates or what they are. And, and we really look at this and go, okay, you come into your blended family, you have high expectations. And I'm not telling you not to have expectations. You know, you should expect God has something great for your marriage. Absolutely. The expectation of what God can do in your blended family should be extremely high. Yeah. But we also need to understand that we are going to inherently because we are a blended family, have some dysfunction that that may not be under every normal circumstance. So how do we prepare for that? How do you prepare for outbursts? How do you prepare for teenage years? Which, by the way, are just hard, period. Um, Co- co-parenting issues. Co-parenting issues. Yeah. Financial issues. Life issues. You know, we want to just encourage you to look at your foundation. Look at the everyday things that you're doing, because kids love routine. They love stability. They love predictability as much as they would tell you that maybe maybe they don't. So they will come back to the ground that they know is firm. So we just want to encourage you to, to be intentional about these times together. Yeah. So guys, we are so excited to conclude this, you know, this series, this four part series on just kind of blending your bunch. We're going to come back uh, next week with a whole new series, all really geared toward our book that's releasing in September, Yep, Blended and Redeemed. Yes. So we are excited about that. We hope that this episode has blessed you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.